just see what's going on here. For whatever reason, um, it seems like reason. I haven't haven't been hosting channels lately. Um, and I've got the auto host set up, but it doesn't appear to have actually been activating. Uh, anyways, um, <clears throat> we're live, we have our quality options, and we're ready for some Stellaris tonight as soon as I load up the game. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, it's been a mixed day for myself. I um, I got some things done that I wanted to, but not uh, the full range, let's say. Uh, and actually, forgive me, I'm going to load up the game, but I need to get... I've got some tea in front of me, and I don't have a place to put the strainer with the leaves. So just give me a second, I'll get like a plate. But yeah, um, otherwise, uh, the week had started off pretty rough. Uh, I, I was late in terms of getting a bunch of things done, but um, yesterday was really productive. I, I kind of got through the Oblivion episode, so that's going to be starting up tomorrow. Hey, cool facts, how you doing? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, Oblivion got recorded. We've got uh, Cult of Simulator ready to go for the next, uh, the next upcoming week. Um, I've fallen off a little bit in terms of a thing that I've been doing in the background, but the, the intention behind it is to have a nice, big, long runway uh, for that. So, the f like, it's it's my nice little extra one. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest, actually, one of the reasons why I've been delaying uh, a little bit of this... Um, <clears throat> one of the really big things that's been coming up for me has just been... Uh, I've been trying to do more me things lately. Um, so a good example of this would actually be um, uh, would actually be me being a little late uh, this week, and it's because so I've got a subscription to Apple TV Plus. Hey, Delves! Uh, all the good people are coming in, and um, there's been some really good stuff to come out recently on that service but it's been it's taken me a while to actually finally start watching any of it because i've just been so busy doing all the other things so i really enjoyed for all mankind which is now in its second season but i'm only now on the third episode of that so i've i've actually started specifically setting aside time for myself to be able to experience um some of this which again sounds very minor um and like it definitely in the context of a stream like so why why waste your time talking about this stuff and honestly for me right now it's just uh it's just really nice to be able to do some more me things um also i kind of feel like it would not it's it's not a bad fit for a somewhat uh i i feel that this is a somewhat sci-fi inclined audience so we've got a few, so we've got some good things going for us. Uh, we've got some troubles coming up. So right now our Empire Sprawl is very high. We are 25 over the limit. Uh, we are bleeding energy credits, uh, so a, sort of a something of a change in circumstances from before. And this is really just due to the fact that we uh, we wound up with a status quo piece. Now, because we are a, uh, a devouring swarm, the type of war that we will fight is different than others so you don't need to have casus belly you can just uh basically the the lines change as you move on so essentially we get to keep the planets that we're currently consuming um now with that in mind there's a few worries that we have so um we have two three systems where we're currently sort of devouring the inhabitants which is giving us a nice big boost to our food but that's not going to last forever. So currently we've got undesirables. They're being exterminated. Um, and, uh, you know, like currently it's generating 132.84, so 133 food uh, and 45 social. But that's, that is going to go away. Right now we've also got a whole bunch of infrastructure that's built. And none of that's really being used for... Um, none of that's really being used. So this is generating a... Um, it's generating a, um, it, it's currently generating an energy deficit. And again, as, as we build the pops, um, 
that will turn around and that will become a major generator of uh, of sort of resources for us. Um, one decision I might want to make is like, well, you know, we can just dismantle a bunch of the different, um, you know, we can just dismantle a bunch of the different uh, buildings and then that'll bring about the, the balance. The challenge there is that um, <clears throat> I have to spend all of the, I don't get any of the minerals back for deconstructing. So I can demolish it, but I will not get, uh, I'll not get the, the values refunded. So in the long run, I'm going to wind up sort of paying for stuff that I, I can't necessarily, that I'll, I'll, I'll pay for it in blood, uh, acquiring it, and then I'll pay, I'll pay for it in minerals to restore it. Um, so I'm going to try and power through, um, the, the status quo. It is going to be challenging. Um, so our stability, you know, due to low amenities, this is a little incredible by the way. Um, but it's just purely because of where the population, uh, is, is sitting right now. Um, under decisions, I don't think there's a whole lot. Well, you know what? I guess there's, Yeah, I don't really want to change the pop growth. I could, of course, also try relocating, but I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that either. So right now, I'm just trying to survive. Uh, I'm just kind of currently trying to survive the status quo, um, which I think we should be able to handle. Um, but uh, there is gonna be, you know, there's gonna be a little juggling as far as as far as the different. Um, different resources are concerned um so in terms of my in terms of my concern so one i do want to get the i do want to kind of get my systems under control um i want to prepare for a world in which we are not um we're not going to be able to take advantage of our conquests in order to generate food so this is currently masking a fairly large uh food deficit um, so I, I do want to start thinking about building farms. I want to get that Empire Sprawl under control again. And um, sort of uh, a there, there's a secondary goal that I have here, which is to try and... Um, so in addition to like trying to find a balance between everything, um, I... Like I need to get the... I need to get my um, my economy back on track. So there's a couple of easy steps that we can take. When we take the YAML system, uh, we should be either in the black or really close to it. Um, I may want to take the Sidor system and the Kanokin system because they will generate pure energy for me. The drawback, of course, is as we do this expansion, the Empire Sprawl is going to go up. Um, and yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, is that, you know, for every every building that I build to try and deal with the food shortage or the implied food shortage, um, we are also going to ru run into the situation where uh, I can't build a building that is dedicated towards dealing with Empire Sprawl. So the other thing that I will try and do uh, as early as I can. So as early, I, I would prefer, if I can, to have this war start sooner rather than later. The problem is, is that we don't know our relative fleet power right now. Um, I actually also don't think we have a way of... Oh, nope. We can we can actually infer it. So, sorry, just one second here. Sorry, you've seen a saw a work-related thing come up. Okay, so I got a uh, I can take the calculator up. So basically, the way that it's currently working is we've got seven six uh, sixty-six. So we subtract two twenty-nine for its pops, two thirty-three for its economy. Uh, we have a big technological advantage, so that's good news for us there. But their military is two hundred seven. So actually, this should give me. Um, I should feel reasonably good about my prospects here, uh, and for the following reasons: <clears throat> number one, 
as far as overall strength is concerned, their economy is is sort of what's driving their uh, their ability. Um, it's the out of the four categories. It's the second. Uh, it's the second worst here. Um, the other possibility that I want to allow for is the fact that there's a big technology, or I think there's a big technology gap between us. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just take a look at my own score. Um, oh, does it not tell me my? Interesting. So I wonder if the victory scores are the same. Okay, interesting. So these guys count as stronger than me. And yeah, this this numbering uh, or the the scoring does not uh, does not translate to the. Huh. All right. So it's a clever way that I can find out my own. Score. Well, I suppose the other thing that I could do would be to compare it with the Armathi Trading Coalition. Okay, well, they're a fleet power 15, so that doesn't really tell me a whole lot. Um, hmm. Oh, here we go. So, oh, all right. Uh, our fleet power is actually 135, so technically we are weaker than them. Also, sorry, Index Gnome, I don't know if I said hello, but uh, good to see you as always. Huh, all right. Um, well, uh, let's let's focus on a couple, of the, a couple of the pillars that we were talking about then. One, let's get our energy credits up. Um, sort of counter to energy credits is going to be the construction of additional ships. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and take whatever low-hanging fruit uh, energy credits uh, wise I can take. I think we'll actually try and push the borders as close as we can to the um, to the um, the uh, the Favarian Coalition's territory. Uh, that's going to make our uh, that's going to make our naval capacity explode, but what are my other options, right? So yeah, we are, I'm going to start with these construction ships. We're going to grab uh, as close as we can to Trond, and then the second set of priorities are going to be to take uh, systems like uh, Kinkoan. We're going to upgrade our fleets, basically in prep for a fight against these guys. And I think in this case here, we're just going to have to accept that the Empire Sprawl will be part of the um, part of the world moving forward, and we'll we'll just do our best. Um, we'll just do our best to uh, to manage it. I also want to just take a second here to see. Yeah, all of this is where I want it to be. Okay, and we can't change, yeah, we can't change any of our rights for the fear. But yeah, so I think probably what's going to happen here is we're going to have to sacrifice uh, Empire Sprawl for a little while, um, but I also think it has uh, learning campaign costs food. I'm going to cautiously run, run with it. Um, I'm a little tempted to do nutritional plentitude. We're already maxed out. Ugh. Yeah, I gotta. I, I just gotta. Technology conceived. I gotta hold my horses here. Okay. Uh, we've got energy siphon. Adapted the Tianqi method of siphoning energy from gaseous matter. It is possible to construct weapons draining energy from energy ships. Okay. Um, pop growth speed seems like something, yeah, so even though it's not as cheap as the others, this is something that I'm going to need to f uh, kind of grow into my existing colonies here. 
So we'll run with that. Playing Stellaris 2, and you just discovered the Black Coda. Oh, that's wonderful, Delves. Um, sorry, for some reason I thought you were the one who uh, who had um, requested that I uh, sort of I mark the the videos so that you can you can follow the uh, the whole history of the of the runs. I'm actually I'm starting to do that uh, with this series here. So, for those of you that were hoping for uh, playlists, your time has come. It's going to take you know it'll. It's going to take a while for those to become the dominant video on the on the YouTube channel, but I was I was happy to get that feedback, and that was in fact something I could uh, act on, which is nice. Um, now this interests me, so we could presumably we'll make this the new sector. Uh, I'm not in a position to recruit a new leader yet, though. They hacked your network and <laughs> Oh, sorry, I get it now. Um, you you are playing. Uh, you took the Black Codex and put it in your own game. Man, that's actually a really interesting idea. I wonder if I can um, put the files for like the species file somewhere for people to download um, to put in their own games. Okay, we've got a new tradition available, so we're heading down the prosperity path. Let's try and do things. Buildings and districts have their build cost reduced by 10 and build speed increased. Uh, or we can improve the output. Uh, let's do output first. That'll p potentially help me with the... Uh, that'll potentially help me with the Empire Sprawl. So this is probably telling us that we're going to run out of money in a few months. And let's just take a second here. I'm going to build a construction ship. So the logic behind that is I want to have a couple construction ships um, tapping all these, these resources. I do have a little bit of a deadline as far as getting the... Uh, as far as just getting everything ready to go. Now, this is purely for my own interest. Um, I was talking about uh, Apple TV's... So first of all, I don't know if any of you are subscribers to Apple TV+. Plus, um, But on top Our of that, uh, if, if any of you have uh, seen, seen this service, have any of you watched For All Mankind? It was purely for my interest. Um, So in an absolute pinch, we can sell off. Um... Oh, you know what? There should be another thing that we can do with influence to try and... No, maybe I'm maybe I'm being mistaken. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing I know. Whenever I mention Apple stuff, uh, it it tends to generate a few sophisticated eye rolls uh, from people who who you know know better as far as computers are concerned. But I I am a pretty happy Apple user, obviously. They've had a couple of, of rather controversial choices recently, but I just, uh, you know, it's it's my phone. It's uh, my, actually, I, I my very yeah, first knowledge. laptop um, that has sort of stopped working properly because of, um, like, technical. So normally my Apple computers have sort of expired um, I am going to have to sell off some stuff for... So I'd prefer to avoid selling food if I can. Oh, but I don't have any use for consumer goods. Man, <laughs> I really blew it on that. Okay, well, here's, here's a way that I can actually save a whole bunch of cash. Um... 
My laptop has started getting puffy on the... Oh, hang on. So who the heck is generating all these consumer goods? Um, the battery has basically got all puffy in the bottom and it doesn't hold a charge anymore. So it's my first computer, my first Apple computer that uh, has stopped, um, basically kind of stopped working because of, uh, there we go. It's, I mean, it's not much, but. Uh, but yeah, so that's the first computer that I've had from them that I've had to, like, I, I need to, like, buy a replacement for or repair, um, as opposed to just technology sort of naturally progressing. What? How? <laughs> By installing an auxiliary fire control system in our ships, we can afford to make more advanced calculations, including increasing accuracy. Anyway, sorry. Um, I've been pretty happy with them as a computer. Uh, obviously, as a gaming platform, you know, there are better options. Um, but uh, I've been pleasantly surprised by the quality of the shows. And uh, the other reason why I brought it up was just simply because uh, another show that recently was released by them is an adaptation of Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. So. Starring uh, Jared Harris as the founder of Psychohistory. Uh, okay, I think I'm going to do Cold Fusion. It's tempting to go for the moat harvesting traps, but I, I actually don't have a use for them right now, so... I have no way. If that is a if that's a real number, if that's an actual cost that we're facing, though, uh, I have no idea how I'm gonna how I'm gonna get around that. There is something of a priority get the spawning pools up and running on all the worlds. The other thing I'm kind of hoping for is that all of these... Oops. The hope is that uh, all of these ships coming into port will be um, uh, will be saving me on some energy costs. Although I'm also going to see some increases in increases in costs as well. Okay, so we don't have any order. One of the problems with my science ships right now is that we don't uh, have any places to explore. We're sort of locked in. Uh, eventually, we're going to be able to test the wormhole. But for the time being, I need to... I basically just need to start assisting research on worlds. So, for the time being, let's just take a look at my sectors, see who's generating the most research. Well, Phobos, obviously. Uh, and Arakim, I'm going to assume that's all social research from eating... Um, eating the occupants. But, you know what? Research is research, so let's send you off to... Help. Oh. 
So they're probably going to... Oh, maybe not. I'm trying to see whether or not they're going to move on the Tron system. Um, for me, I think what I'm going to do is we'll take Impal Tov, Hark, uh, and then move on to Trond. That is going to have a cost. Okay, here we go. The, uh, the shift has already started. So I'm not as worried about the food here just because we're going to have a really big stockpile. But again, this I expect this number to go down very quickly. Technology conceived. Uh, breakthroughs in enucleation and artificial womb technology allows for the mass production of individuals based on a common genetic template. So... I also have uh, hydroponics as an option, I suppose. Let's do... Actually, let's do hydroponics, uh, especially because it lines up well with the specialization here. Technology conceived. Okay, we did replace the... Wait a minute. Why can't I sell consumer goods? Oh, I guess because there's, no, um, there's no market for them. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, the production uh, and understanding of supersolids are of immeasurable value to every space age civilization. Um, let's boost our mining station output. Again, it would be nice to be able to exploit uh, the gases, but in this case here, being able to get more out of my existing resources is the name of the game. And we do have another. We do have another ship ready to go. Still on the fence as to whether or not you should pick up Nemesis. Um, so, Index Gnome, I don't know if you do this for yourself. Obviously, actually, uh, you give me a good reminder that it is current. Uh, I am currently playing uh, a copy of the game, both Stellaris and pretty much all the DLC except for a couple of the species packs uh, have been given to me by Paradox for promotional purposes. Um, but for those of you who are wondering whether or not you want to pick up a given DLC, I've personally found it very helpful to check the wiki. Now, keep in mind that the wiki is maintained by... Par well, it's hosted by Paradox. It's sort of maintained by the community. But you are asking, like... It's the the people who make the game. You're asking them, should I buy this, this product that you have made? Obviously, you know, uh, we should be a little careful in terms of recommendations that we're doing here. But... Um, you know, I don't... I do not get keys for every Paradox game. Uh, I have to make the decision for myself for at least some of the games. You know, is this worth picking up for me? And what I often find is I will, um, you know, I'll take a look at the, I'll take a look at the wikis and then I'll basically, it'll do a reasonable enough breakdown in terms of what you get in the DLC and what you get in the free update. So, in this case here, DLC features a nemesis. The player is able to determine the fate of a destabilizing galaxy. Adding espionage tools as a path, uh, sorry, a path to power as galactic custodian to combat endgame crises, or the menace option to become the endgame crisis. Nemesis gives you the most powerful tools ever available in Stellaris. Ultimately, you will have to make the choice between chaos or control to take charge of a galaxy spiraling into crisis. You will, uh, will you find a way to take power through diplomacy or subterfuge, or will you watch the stars go out one by one? So become the crisis. You are the fire that spreads across the galaxy, threatening its very existence. As your empire becomes more and more menacing, you'll unlock powerful bonuses to finish a hopeless galactic stalemate on your own terms. Um, galactic... Wait a minute, is Galactic Custodian um, locked, locked behind it? Interesting. Um... And then I'm actually a little confused as to the new ships. Anyways, they also have, uh, sorry, uh, feature breakdowns. Where was it? Uh, these feature breakdown videos are pretty good. And again, there's the associated, um, there's the associated uh, patch, which is the free stuff that you'll get. But essentially what I've tended to find is, it's like, well, do, do these things interest me enough? 
um, you know, if you play a game that is very focused, like if you tend to play the game and you don't see the end game that much, it's a little bit hard to say that Become the Crisis or Galactic Custodian is going to do a whole lot for you. On the other hand, if you sort of feel like, like one thing I was kind of interested in was the Galactic Custodian and the idea of creating an empire and such. That I actually really enjoyed in the previous playthrough. So for me, that would have made that something where I'm like, okay, yeah, uh, Nemesis is a, is a buy for me. Um, and uh, especially, you know, there are a few more DLC for, for Stellaris now than, you know, maybe when I was first kind of making these recommendations. But particularly with a game like Crusader Kings 2, when, you know, I run into friends and they're like, okay, that game looks pretty good, but like, seriously, is it like worth hundreds of dollars, you know, after all of the DLC? And I'd sort of say, it's like, well, what you want to do is just kind of fold, you know, fold in, you know, the expansions as you, as you keep playing, like basically kind of work, work on it, um, fold in what you can. And uh, instead of buying it all in one go, you'll you'll find that it's maybe a little more manageable than you than you think. Um, so for me, the idea of playing a Merchant Republic was really appealing. Um, and so clearly, I would want to get the Republic uh, mm -hmm. DLC more than say uh, what was the one um, Jade Empire, I think. Uh, anyways, the the one that um, sort of added China, except that you couldn't expand the map any further, so uh, China sort of is more off the stage uh, doing things. I tend not to play a lot of Eastern Empires, and so as a consequence, that might be a um, you know that might be a DLC that that isn't quite as effective for me. Okay, so I'm pretty much not getting the Tron system, uh, but I can try to get the Hark system. But yeah, if you, for now that the, you know, now that we know, um, I've been I've been given a key for promotional purposes. If you have any questions about the DLC, um, I will I'll do my best to uh, to answer as honestly as I can. Um, okay, hydroponics farming in a controlled environment allows for crops to be grown in climates where farming would normally be impossible. Uh, it would be kind of nice to get more star bases, uh, but let's go for cheap technology. So, actually, you know what? Additional envoy. So, additional influence isn't important. But additional envoys would be kind of nice so that I can I can spread my spread my covert influence. We also have Stop the Bleeding as far as energy credits are concerned, so let's get a, a new leader. Our construction is complete. Yeah, that's not what I want to do. Okay, so I'm going to take, basically I'm going to take the energy rich systems first. It's all good, you won't ask you to decide what to spend your money on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, um, I try to, I try to help, help the navigation, but I, I, I know better than to tell people what their tastes are. Actually, you know what? I'm going to grab Impaltov here and I'm going to build the star base. So I'm switching the places just because this one's closer. That food's starting to look pretty scary though. So let's make sure that we've got our spawning our spawning pools first. Yeah, so we've pretty much cleaned out all these planets, which is good. That's why our energy credits are getting uh, are improving. But now comes the hard part of actually feeding everyone. So the priority has got to be to build some farming worlds. I don't think the capital should be uh, focused on farming. I think we should offload that to a dedicated world. Um, powder and... Yeah, you know what? Powder and uh, Arakim will be the candidates for that. So let's replace one of the mining mining segments with farming 
and we will make that an agra world and then on top of that we are going to oh we do not have the food bonus yet And it's a bit of a shame, right? Because it would have been nice. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, we really could have rocked it with um, alloys. In fact, with that in mind. But Wasat's generating a bunch of energy, so I can't really afford to sacrifice that. But maybe what we do is we we turn Diam into a farming world. So powder, I'm actually I'm gonna leave that as a question mark. Diam might be more appropriate. Okay, so next up we gotta see uh, what worlds are gonna need employment soon. All right, lots of free jobs available there. So again, as long as the spawning pools have been taken care of, there's actually one more thing I'm going to do here, which is to put down uh, a synaptic node and then eventually a stronghold. Technology conceived. Okay, the ability to sustain a fusion reaction at relatively low temperatures will result in a ju new generation of fusion reactors for our ships. Uh, let's do planetary FTL inhibitors. We sort of leap, uh, we leapfrog that for a bit, but I do think. I, I do think I should uh, I should I should limit the enemy's movement for sure. Um, things are looking good, except for the food situation. Things are actually looking pretty good as far as the economy is concerned, and we're back under control for the empire sprawl. So yeah, I think I am going to keep Powder as a forge world. But we do need to think seriously about where the food's coming from. Uh, also, we need to upgrade my navy. And then after that, we're going to start building more ships. Because, of course, the easy answer to my food problems is just to simply take over more systems. Our construction is complete. So we're going to skip uh, improving Impaltov and we're going to go straight for the physics. Or, well, we'll get somebody to pick up the physics research, but right now I just want the Hark system before the, uh, before the AI claims it. So they do count as superior fleet-wise. That doesn't mean I can't like nail them in their uh, in their capital world, um, but uh, I probably want to be a little more confident in my position before I pick a fight. I also just need to keep in mind like these guys still count as pathetic, so uh, we are at peace for another six years. But once I'm able to go to war with them again, they're going to be a ready source of nutrition. So I want to be a little more. I want to be. Uh, I want to be mindful of that opportunity. For the time being, though, I think I should probably prepare for a future where I don't have a lot of energy credits to throw around. And then the other thing I want to do is make sure that my pops. Oh my God! Yeah. Um, I think we're going to let the AI run free as far as jobs are concerned. This is probably going to mess with the rest of my... This is probably going to mess with the rest of my... Uh, with the rest of my priorities, but at this point here, I don't think... It may be that the answer is we don't need more farms. Maybe we just need to take advantage of what we already have access to. So let's see what happens. OK, 
yesterday. My economy didn't exactly collapse. Uh, also, I forgot to read the description. So the energy grids that power our hives can also be used to boost the neural signals transmitted to some of our drones, allowing for further modifications and enhancements to uh, efficiency. So here we can only do one, prefabricated buildings. Production of a large number of generic standardized buildings, excuse me, is much more efficient than designing and building them individually. Buildings and districts have their build costs reduced by 10% and their build speed increased by 25%. Doesn't seem like the most exciting on its own, um, but it actually really gives my economy a kick in the pants when, when things are working the way they're supposed to. Okay. So realistically, we are fine employment-wise. What this also means is I'm actually going to start switching over some of the priorities. So... Should replace instead of build. I may need. I uh, mean, I need to do some resettlement, but we'll we'll leave that be for now. And then once the okay, the star bases are already being constructed. So let's. I will strain my uh, economy a little bit, but. Actually, what's my distribution of... Okay, that's Our all destroyed. Is complete. Uh... Probably have too many now. All right, this is annoying. Um, it's because it's the queues switching each time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay. Just need eight. I'll adjust this around a little bit. Okay, food's gone in 16 months. That was actually a lot faster than I thought it was gonna take. Um, Our construction is complete. Technology conceived. Increased scanner range will allow us to more quickly identify mineral concentrations and focus our mining efforts there. Uh, let's do plasteel armor. Uh, the reason I didn't do the missiles is the plasteel armor is something that pretty much I'm going to put on every ship. That's not necessarily true for everyone else. Clearly I am confused about where all this energy is coming from. So I've got two there. Oh, there's three. Sorry, I thought that was a one. <laughs> But 
So there's a trade-off that's happening here, right? Obviously, the spawning pools are creating more, uh, you know, more of my species, which of course means that there's going to be um, there's going to be added strain on my uh, on my um, my food resources. One of the other approaches I am going to take is upgrading all of my, you know, all of my various, um, all the the different star bases. Uh, being able to build some hydroponics farms there should help me out a little bit. But again, all this stuff takes uh, takes time. It takes money. Um, it also means that I'm not able to build additional anchorages. So I feel like this doesn't need to be a shipyard, so let's convert that to... But it is on a border, so... I gotta think of that. Well, it's not helping me right now, so let's let's still switch that to a... It's a start. So I'm trying to think if going to war is the right answer on this, or... Um, you know, letting what'll happen, happen. I don't think I want to entertain a war yet. It's it's a kind of a cowardly choice at the moment, but I will buy uh, I'll buy food sort of on a as needed basis, which is it's gonna sting. Um, We'll try at this point here what I want to do is I want to try and I want to try and get the economy to a point where um, we can survive the peace treaty and then basically our first target is going to be Soyan so that we can start eating our the residents as soon as possible and then uh, following that I mean, after that, we just try and, and take these... Oh, wow, they only have one colony. I did not realize that. There is one other thing that I can do, which is to prioritize aggro drones on the aggro worlds. Or really any world for that matter. Oh, but that kills my energy.
Sure helps, though. Our construction is complete. Okay, um, let's build what we can in the Hark system. That's going to hit our generators. So I want to see what happens when we turn over on the... Okay, so we've kind of hit an equilibrium here. So the next step is basically going to be, let's find the one with the more diverse... Um, kind of the more diverse collection of... Okay, this one definitely needs all the tech drones. Hmm, interesting. So if I let these guys ease off... Well then, I mean, really what it comes down to is there's... One system focused on energy generation, which reminds me, we definitely need to put an energy grid on the generator worlds. So we're down to 39, so if I remove that specialty, what happens? We apparently go crazy for maintenance drones. Technology oh, for God's complete. sake! What? <laughs> what is it with this AI? <laughs> okay. Um, we'll cover maintenance needs. The problem is, is that doing the, the last time we did this, this is how we wound up with food problems. So I'm really reluctant to take this approach. Um, so in this case here, I'm going to say maintenance jobs are a luxury at this point. Now, unfortunately, Wasset just doesn't have the popular... Oh, no, hang on. Jesus Christ. Okay, they're balancing out. Alright, it's not pretty, but this should hopefully balance things out a little bit better. This is the kind of micromanaging that I can do, but I, I don't like doing in Stellaris, particularly when the uh, particularly when the Empire like really sprawls out. All right, semi-independent units have proved critical to the success of the greater whole. Uh, let's say... I mean, this is not bad, uh, especially from the amenities point of view. Yeah, actually, let's go for it. So unity of purpose. It'll help with the deviancy as well as... Uh, if it boosts the amenities, then that means that I need fewer units to support those amenities. All of my worlds currently have a star base on them. It also occurred to me that I have been ignoring an archaeological site, so we're going to excavate that. And the big question for me now is where do I want to put the next star base? 
I'm sort of inclined to put it in Hark, but it's not actually going to be very useful as a defense. I also can't afford it uh, energy-wise. Oh, what the hell is going on now? So apparently we're going nuts for food, but we're struggling with energy. Gravity well projectors can be used to create localized pockets of space where a safe entry into hyperspace is impossible. The immense power requirements and size of these projectors prohibits their use on anything smaller than a starbase. Okay, um, I can get a faster colony development speed. I don't really think we have the Empire Sprawl or the availability of planets to handle it. There is, of course, the temptation of gateway activation. The problem is, is that that still counts as 14,000, which is well beyond my uh, my capabilities right now. Um, so I think I'm going to start with mode harvesting traps. I'm not going to rule out uh, AI-controlled colony ships, but at the very least, mode harvesting is something that I can... I can make some kind of a credible claim that it's going to go towards something that the Empire needs right away. I'll enjoy the surplus of food right now. It just it's a, a little annoying to have it. Energy wise, we should be doing a bit better. Um, you know, Hark will will take some of that away. Cider will bring it back. Steril. You know, again, it's sort of a 50-50. It's probably not bad for me to sort of secure my borders though. So our construction is complete. <laughs> And then they're not getting any stronger. We're four years away from a fight. Okay, uh, I'm going to do just a quick little bit of housekeeping with these. Okay, five destroyers I'm fine with. Let's kick out a couple corvettes. Gee, one of those destroyers. I should probably work out exactly what role each of these things is playing in my in my navy, but for now I'm just gonna settle for wait a minute. I am a clown. We got the space for him, so... I suppose if I wanted a proper division of the two, it would be something like an eight. Yeah, you know what, let's actually work that out that way, so...
So basically, it's just kind of a, an even split um, between Corvettes and Destroyers. Hey, Night Valian, good to see you. For those who don't know him, Night Valian's playing some Origami game. No, Origami 2. Uh, another fine Game Pass uh, Game Pass title. And Night Valian streams a little bit later than me, so he's a very safe uh, safe option for me to, uh, to host at the end of a broadcast. Soft-voiced Brazilian streamer, and uh, a lot of fun to watch. So I hope uh, some of you who are into that he actually it does variety quite a bit better than me, so he's a bit more consistent in terms of his streaming schedule. I don't know if you stream every night, but it sure feels like you do. Um, and uh, plays a really, really wide variety of games. So while I might follow like a, a broad definition of variety streamer, uh, I certainly don't... Um, you know, I play games quite slowly, so it takes me a while to, you know, to get to get on to, to the next one. But Outer Wilds DLC, I did not know that. Do we know how much it's going to cost? I have it on Epic, so um, I don't think they say what the price is. <laughs> I'd love it if I had the time to be able to stream every day, but there's no possible way that that would happen. Okay, let's see what other options I have in the capital. Yeah, I'm really looking for something I can spend my influence on, but it's just not happening. So I'm just going to keep an eye on my on my amenities. I'm okay with it being zero. I'm not okay with it falling to negative numbers as a result of me pushing that number down. It's like here, just as a precaution, we'll open up another maintenance drone slot. He'd ask for 60 and you'd play it <laughs> or pay it. I, I yeah, I, I'd, um, oh, you know what? I'm building that star base right away. Oh, no, nope. looks like I'm committed to the mining station after all. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have too much stuff on my plate to, to spend full price for a DLC like that, but Outer Wilds is a wonderful game, so. If you're gonna throw your money at a game, Outer Wilds, Outer Wilds could could do could be worse. I should probably upgrade Hark at some point too. It's not necessarily gonna stop the enemy ships, but it will. Um... Actually, yeah, I suppose with that in mind, uh, the Valona system would make a lot more sense, uh, seeing as that is the proper choke point. It also has a strategic resource, so. Um... I think I will do that, actually. It's probably going to cost like 200 for an upgrade. Yeah. And of course, there'll be an associated energy cost as well. Okay, three years until we can, we can start our war. Our construction is complete. Now the big worry would be if we start a war with these guys and these folks turn around and declare war on us. That is a possibility that I need to allow for. Uh, the good news is, is that I will need something of a minimalist uh, fleet to be able to handle, you know, handle Our situation lock is I do wish I could get my infiltration levels higher, I just know I don't have the, the money for it right now. Uh, patrol drones performing a routine surface sweep on Ennist 3 have alerted the mine to an irregularity within our controlled space. Signs of possible activity consistent with a precursor civilization have been sighted. A new archaeological ruin on Ennist 3. We haven't handled the one on YAML yet. Okay. 
Okay, and we get a new ascension perk. So by extending hive districts underground, uh, far more drones can be housed within. Hive districts provide one additional housing, and ring world hive segments provide five additional housing. Not critical for us right now, but we've got the finisher effect now, so adopting all prosperity traditions will grant the following additional effects. Resources from uh, menial jobs, an additional 5%, five stability, and then the ascension book perk, which we're gonna take right now. So Become the Crisis is very, very tempting. Um, the other alternatives I would consider right now would be uh, One Vision for the Unity and um, Okay, you know what? I don't normally like leaving strategic decisions for chat. My personal feeling would be I would like One Vision to help with the amenities usage and boost my unity so that I can just get the next upgrade faster. Um, but I do, I am going to do Become the Crisis for sure. Um, and for me, it's just a question of when. Again, uh, my preference would be One Vision for the 10% unity bonus, but I'm willing to entertain uh, chats whims when it comes to whether or not I should become the crisis. So does anybody, I won't do a poll, but does anybody have a preference? Actually, tell you what, while you sort yourselves out there, uh, I'm not going to go to the bathroom, but I am going to get a quick snack and I'm going to water my plant. So I forgot to do that on Sunday. So that'll take me all of 10 seconds. All right. Uh, Glum4, hello. Um, no preference. So there may be no preferences when I come back, but I'm going to take just a quick second to myself. So. Yeah, well, that's just it. Sorry, I got a mouthful. Um, okay, there isn't overwhelming support for um, Become the Crisis, so I'm going to do one vision, but Become the Crisis will be the next one. Our construction is complete. Sorry, I probably should have just eaten and then come back, but... I'm happy that we're in double digits for everything now.
Forgot to build my strongholds. Our construction is complete. Okay, that's more or less where I want it to be now. We'll take the cutter system. So this might push us above our empire sprawl, but <clears throat> I'm going to assume that as our as our population sort of builds into its different roles, we'll. Um, We'll be able to handle that. And we're doing okay-ish as far as uh, alloys are concerned. So we'll put out another... Just one more destroyer. All right. We kind of we kind of knew that was going to come. So that's two years before we can... We can start the party with... Uh, the Armathi Trading Coalition. So, I mean, basically, it's it's just like it was before. Foul Parasite, you had better prepare your fleets, for this is war. Our flesh harvesters are coming for your larvae. Okay, let's change that path a little bit. The biggest worry I have is that we may be arriving too late. The good news, though, is that we actually get a nice big bonus when it comes to fighting them on our own territory. Sorry for the silence, I'm almost done my snack. Our construction is complete. I'm actually going to put a star base here, or a shipyard here. What I may also want to consider is the um, Arakim system. Either Phobos or Arakim I want to reconsider as a... Technology conceived. I think I'm going to shift a little bit towards generators on the capital world. 
All right, volatile motes are fickle particles that are dangerous to work with. In order to safely harvest them without setting off a chain reaction of explosions, energy fields must be used to stabilize the motes. Um, quantum energy states is... I mean, shields would be great because it gives me a little bit of extra firepower. kind of feel like quantum energy states are the most important for me right now. Just from an economy stamp. Well, yeah, let's go for the shields. <clears throat> Technology conceived. We're dedicated to devouring everything. We should probably have that single-minded purpose. Uh, plasteel is an elastic material that combines many of the qualities of plastics and metal. It is relatively cheap to produce and can be used to augment ship armor. So, unfortunately, the war came a little early for that. <clears throat> That's fine. We'll work with the we'll work with what we've been given. I am going to take the ion thrusters just because obviously logistics is a problem right now. We do have a very long path to to uh, take. I'm also start tempted to start upgrading these stations. Then again, it looks like they really haven't recovered their navy, so they're not likely to declare war on me in the next couple of months. So we'll gather in the Poru system, then we'll move on to Levisco. Oh, weird. I thought I was building a starbase there. So, of course, the time has come now to start exploiting some of the resources. Oh, not as many as I thought. Swarm. <laughs> okay, now we don't have any info as to what uh, what kind of weaponry they're packing. I am interested in seeing where they're going, uh, but I don't believe I don't believe we have that Our information. Is complete. Complete. So I did say I was going to do a shipyard first. Uh, let's do a. Oh, we should still focus on defense. We sent a hostile swarm. Okay, 1260 and 596. <clears throat> so we're going to arrive late for our defenses. And it looks like they are heading to the Tronda system, so they're probably going to be landing in Hark or Mothellum. Oh my god, what are you guys doing? <laughs> so, this one is banned. This one's banned. And we could probably take the ancient mining drones, but maybe not now. Okay, let's see where they're heading. Uh, it looks like they are heading towards Hark. Question is if we can get there. We are not going to get there on time, so they are going to they are going to take that off of us. So let's head to Impal Tov instead. Okay, and looks like they are actually doing a big hit on YAML, so I'd love to do the archaeological site, but we actually need to get out of here, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to set a... Well, I'm going to put a big greeting party for them in the YAML system, I figure being able to do a heavy battlefield defeat on them uh, would be better. Unfortunately, I do think I've condemned the cunning Krill to a... Uh, to a bit of a sticky situation. We flee the hostile swarm. Our hive is under attack. Okay, 
Okay. It's a lot of beams. A lot of beams and rockets, it looks like. Okay, new hostile swarm. So... Okay, so individually, these are not all that intimidating. It's it's just the it's the group numbers that are are something to worry about. So we're gonna again we're gonna have some losses, but we are gonna be def we are gonna be fighting them on home territory. Our space so. line is lost. So that's 22, 24, 26. So again, not ideal circumstances, but we do sort of outnumber them. Oh, looks like they actually want to fight, so I'm going to just buy myself as much time as I can. actually thinking let's peel these guys off and get them to deal with the 568 group and then the black tide will come in so the idea here is that this is this is designed to sort of waste their time uh, where are they heading Okay, so they're looking to reinforce over here. But they're all moving where they need to, so... I am going to want to report on how effective our weapons were. Okay, that's two Corvettes down. They lost six. Hmm. I'm not quite sure I have... quite sure I have enough information to be able to, to act on that yet. So my preference would be to uh, head back into my own territory and heal up. I, unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. So they are on their way to YAML. What I want to do here is I want to hold back again for the same reasons. The good news is, though, that I'm going to have my own units. They're there's going to be two of us ready to match their uh, 966. So we we win this engagement reasonably convincingly. Uh, let's do aggressive. What I should have done is actually there's nothing saying that I have to do it this way. Um, Changed my mind. But I will build those replacement Corvettes. Again, this is close to the front line because I want them, I want a very quick replacement rate. Okay, looks like they're hesitating. Oh, no, you don't. 
Oh, they're coming they're coming to get my uh They're coming to get my construction ship. So I can't send them to the Ulysses system, obviously. Okay, we took Yamo back. I think we're gonna have to try and claim the base back before we... Still move too fast. Could be considered an aggressive act, but so we already moved to straight onto the. So again, we may not save our base. Assuming this will be a uh, very quick battle. Okay, nothing lost. Unfortunately, nothing lost for them either. get back to our uh, excavations when we can. Okay, so we count as equivalent after that. That's interesting. <clears throat> so this is just sending in the replacements. We can save this base, I'm gonna be so happy. Oh, interesting. Did they. I think they escaped. Well, that's good news for me because that just means that we all gather together in the Poru system and then we make a big push on, on this base, ideally without losing ships. And they are. Almost ready. We should probably move the army in place too. So this is another example of a opponent that apparently decided um, they were ready to take us out and sort of immediately suffering <laughs> Immediately, immediately suffering losses as a result. Um, I 
We have piracy? In a hive mind? Okay, let's just do a quick audit of our existing worlds. Our construction is complete. I think generally we're okay. Maybe a little worried job-wise, but... How much food do we generate? Oof. Yeah, I don't think I should be replacing any more of those. If we're generating 9.9 .9 on the capital world, um, basically that's my surplus accounted for. <clears throat> so I, I do want more energy, but not, you know, not at the expense of starvation. There is also a side of me that would like to upgrade all of the ships, um, but I, I feel like we need to, we really need to stick it to the enemy before we, uh, before we consider that. Like at this point here, some of their major fleets have been, have been knocked out, which is good for us, but that doesn't mean that they don't come back in force. Sorry, just a second. I thought I heard an alarm. So, I mean, if I were to if I were to to end status quo here, I would actually be reasonably happy because these are the barriers as I originally wanted them. Clearly that's not how I'm going to handle it. How I'm going to handle it is we're going to move on to every single one of the worlds that they have with uh, you know, with edible populations on them and, you know, eat our fill. Um, but just, uh, it's a nice little indicator of, of where... Technology conceived. You know, where we're at. Okay, the purpose of one is the purpose of all. Together we are greater than the sum of our parts. Uh, let's do... I would kind of like more starbase capacity, but I think I am going to go for the tile blockers. This thing isn't all that tough. Okay. Time to pick a new path. So I think domination doesn't exactly work. I mean, so it's kind of nice because of some of its bonuses, but like the idea of being able to, you know, vassalize someone doesn't quite uh, make sense. I actually seem to recall nothing better than a good alien stew. Exactly. So, um... There were uh, definitely some, there were definitely some traditions I was thinking of as uh, when I looked at this last time. I totally forgot what they were. So adaptability sort of feels like harmony all over again. Diplomacy is like a non-starter. <laughs> um, I don't think I don't think this is useful at all to hive mind. Uh, I also feel like subterfuge may not be the best use of our abilities either. So at some point. Supremacy would be nice. Now, again, it's worth considering what the actual bonuses are. So, you know, in this case here, ship build costs. Uh, upkeep is actually kind of nice. Uh, and then the firing rate is is a good improvement. So there are actually a couple of things that I can, I can see uh, as useful. Unyielding is also kind of tempting just because of its ability to uh, sort of improve my star bases. Um, synchronicity, leader lifespan stabilities and then maybe once upon a time I would have tried discovery but yeah actually I think supremacy is where we want to go right now so the naval cap isn't really all that important to me um, but the reduction in ship upkeep and uh, the bonuses from overwhelming force are definitely something that I I think are worth it and of course we will be gaining them at a faster rate than I would have normally <laughs> Um, 
because we did decide to go for one vision. But clearly, clearly the next uh, the next step is going to be become the crisis. Army's still a way away. Oops. Not quite yet. So this isn't just for replacements, this is to expand my my existing fleets too. So the way that I think I'm going to handle this is once we start taking major objectives off of our opponents, uh, I'm going to start cycling out certain fleets so that there will be one fleet that's sort of uh, refitting at Valonis. Um, that will obviously be contingent on me running into something that really scares me, but overall I think we should feel we should feel okay. So it looks like we didn't lose any looks like we didn't lose any ships and this base isn't Actually none of these bases are all that much stronger. So I think what I'm going to do here if the White Crush was the one that uh, took the damage, Deluge is going to take its time, so. Actually, maybe we'll just send them to go upgrade at Valonis as well. So we should still have two fleets that are on their way to take out the the enemy. And... As much as I'd love them to do the excavation, I don't have another science ship to get the, the extra research. So Euram and Dirth are going to be our our two priorities. Uh, through hard work and experience, Governor Ubsoth Tuhiv has developed new skills. Uh, all of this is contingent on the transport fleet actually arriving. Actually, do we have any intel? Yeah, so they've got a garrison of 101. This has got 104 in space, and then the actual planet is sitting on 101. Actually, we're only packing 175. We should probably bring something a little sterner. Encounter in Al uh, Amor Alveo. We have made first contact with mysterious aliens in the Amor Alveo system. We should find out more about them so that we may decide whether they would be suitable nutrition for our drones. For now, they have been given the designation He Aliens. Okay. 
So we're gonna repair before we do anything else here. Actually, the typhoon's already repaired, so we'll grab what we're gonna do here. This is probably another. Oh nope, that is definitely not a. <laughs> that is definitely not a an enclave. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna with my uh, with my sort of free fleet. I'm gonna just snipe the. I'm just gonna snipe like the low hanging fruit, and then when both are when both are healed, we'll just move in on on uh, their capital world. Again, sort of the world's my oyster as far as uh, as far as the invasions concerned because we're you know we we there aren't really any there aren't any fleets that are currently threatening us uh, and as a result like forcing movement on our part and we definitely have the we definitely have the edge as far as um, like as far as the momentum as far as the war exhaustion is concerned. So at this point here, it's very unlikely we're going to wipe them out. But as long as we can sort of get the borders to somewhere where I would be happy with a status quo peace, and more importantly, if we can start taking some systems which I can, you know, I can start consuming the inhabitants of, um, that's, uh, that's a win in my book. And it doesn't look like they've invested anything in their military since our last encounter. So what I'm going to do here, um, let's do... So what I'm really trying to do here is just increase my infiltration level. So I'm going to assign another asset. That is going to cost me six, but we are still in double digits off of that. So I think that's a good use of my... I think that's a good use of my resources. And as above, we just want to make sure that... So I basically just want to unlock the jobs that I have available uh, where I can and just make sure that I'm not causing any undue hardship on the colonies um, based off of my, uh, my restrictions. So this is a good example here, right, where, you know, it's easy for me to unlock these maintenance drones. It is a little weird to just have so many maintenance drones, um, but... You know, it is what it is, right? Um, actually, one thing I can do with the Urum system. We can start bombing Iblas just in we case we don't have... Knowledge. Our construction is complete. Ion thruster. These electric thrusters use beams of ions to generate thrust without the need for propellant. Let's do deep core mining. And of course, we did just get a new tech, so I'm going to cancel the upgrade order. There's a special order in which I need to do this. So stop. So we'll wait the 31 days. Technology conceived. Shields! These new shield generators represent the next generation of energy screens, replacing the older deflector technology. They offer significantly better protection. So what I'm trying to do here is if I have to take a fleet out to, you know, for upgrades, I want to make sure I'm paying that cost once. I don't want to, like, send it out twice to get the, the latest techs. Okay, so I, if I want plasma throwers, they're mine. Um... It is actually the lowest overall cost as far as uh, military techs are concerned, so we are gonna we are gonna take that. Okay, that's a science ship, so.
Again, the aim here isn't to do any anything too crazy. Oh, this is good. Okay. They'll all eventually combine with this fleet, or this uh, army, but it's just going to take a while. Okay, so the upgrades are on their way. Now we can do the replacement Corvettes and such. Oh, I did it on the wrong fleet. Wait, no, I got that the wrong way around. Ooh. Ooh, that is a scary fleet to be looking at. They're probably going to catch me too. Jesus. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to first contact. Hey, aliens, upon entering uh, Amor Alveo, our sensors picked up some strange readings. Dismissed at first as glorified asteroids, things quickly changed when it was discovered that these entities reacted aggressively to movement in space, even at great distance. Observation of these entities, preferably from a safe distance, is advised. Best viewed from afar, keep it up. All right. I genuinely do not know how to handle this. Um, so... <clears throat> Apparently that is equivalent fleet power to me. So I am in theory sitting on about... Put generously 8k fleet strength, but not really. Um, 6k of that is somewhat immediately available. Um... The 8K might be able to arrive in time, so let's move them to the LaVisco system. Yeah, I mean, pound for pound, as long as we get out of here on time, we should be able to handle it, but... God, that's nerve-wracking. I definitely want to face them on home territory, though. So I would have preferred to fight this in the Euron system, um, but at this point here, I think we need we need to make sure that we have the. We need to have, basically, we need to make sure that we have as many ships as we can to fight this. And they're not doing anything too special right now, so I'm going to start excavating at YAML, but we're almost certainly going to be recovering fragments. So the good news is that they may be delayed. Yeah, they're just going to want to reclaim some of their systems, which I'm, I'm fine with. Again, 
If we just wait out the clock, we win. Um, Our avoid hive is under attack. attack. Our deep cover operatives have stepped up their surveillance on potential targets. Acknowledged. While well, I'm at it. Um, yeah, let's... It's expensive, but let's... Uh, let's put the investment in. And this upgrade's taking forever. I might even have to pull further back than Lavisco. The problem is, is that if we if we don't if we don't make a stand at Lavisco, uh, and let's get the. safety too. If we don't stand at Levisco, then we don't get the bonus from the Starbase. Uh, and at that point, we basically need to pull back to Volanus uh, to be able to to be able to make that work. So it was the right call to pull them back here, but we're still... We're still in uh, somewhat dire straits. Unless these guys aren't going to do anything. Nope, these are even more units. That's almost 5, 7... Jesus Christ. So we're looking at about 10k. They definitely outgun us. So fighting in, fighting in, in this is almost necessary, except for the fact that we may not have all of the ships in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to move close to the Poru system. Um, I think I can afford the learning campaign again, so we'll do that for our leaders. We're 65% on the upgrade. So it, I, it's kind of... It's the come to Jesus moment for this fleet. Okay, you know what? There's a far more practical question which I need to ask, which is if if the AI is going to do this fight, um, So the number of jumps that they need to do to force a fight that I can't handle uh, is two. What's the number of jumps that I, in the opt in like if I have completely abandoned my upgrade intentions here? Um, what's the number of jumps that it would take me? Well, considerably more. It's a year of transport. So as much as it pains me to do this, uh, unless they start moving differently. And it really doesn't look like they are. Uh, I should be pulling back to the Valana system. These entities encountered by our fleet some time ago are new space-born life forms. While significantly larger than a fear corvette, these space amoeba herds are minuscule next to our full corpus. So, easy prey. Amoeba Hunter modifier gathered, giving the following effects. 33% bonus damage to uh, space amoebas, and then 1,000 credits for every space amoeba fleet destroyed. We gain additional influence. Or oh, fascinating creatures. Uh, let's say the easy prey. Three shells make contact with our mind. But yeah, so I am going to watch. I am going to watch what these fleets are doing. Because right now they're on their way to the the Rashkamir system, or sorry, Ras uh, Raskamir? Yeah.
but I think what I'm going to do instead is for all of the for all of the fleets, I'm actually just going to send them for an upgrade. So basically, the logic that I see behind this is if they stop, then we fight them at Levisco. If they don't stop, then we pull back. We upgrade as many fleets as we can. Um, we are willing to give up some of the territory that we personally have expanded out into, but that's in the name of taking an advantageous fight in my strongest, uh, in my strongest base. And then what we do is we reclaim that territory um, and then we force out the peace. Okay, and here it looks like they're staying put. Any other rocks certainly gone now. There is clear evidence that Yamal 1 was at some point inhabited by, inhabited by a sapient species. Ruins that have been found uh, of an industrial age civilization on the cusp of pre-FDL spaceflight. At some point, however, the civilization was struck with a planet-wide calamity and totally extinguished. Little more than rubble remains, and there are no signs of that any protective measures were taken by the afflicted population. The event was not violent or destructive. Everything just seemed to stop. Whatever hit them came as a complete surprise, or perhaps they chose not to resist it. So the surface of YAML-1 is devoid of all life, however, there are indications of a previously thriving biosphere and some interesting tectonic activity which may warrant a closer look. So one other thing I could be doing is building additional ships right now, but I do like the idea of sort of multiplying the existing forces that I have and then we can, then we can cram uh, more, uh, more ships. Yeah, right now it looks like they're all... Okay, so there is one group coming on to Yoram. Uh, looks like two. A short list of targets has been drawn up. Those operatives who are no longer tasked with surveillance will provide cover for the others. So again, I think it's fairly unlikely that they're going to want to just sit and have their own stations be taken out. But I do want to see what they do after they after they take the station. Let's make sure we've got the evacuation ready to go. Yep. I miss you. Like one thing that would be awesome is if you could just take existing enemies uh, star bases and oh, you can. I had no idea that we could downgrade these. So I guess this counts as mine, huh? I wish I knew that, because we could have spent some time hardening this. Obviously, I would have done the same to this one as well, but that's going to count as a loss for us. Confidence wavers. A group of auxiliary op operatives in the Aramanthi Ar Trading Coalition have begun lagging in their assigned tasks, displaying behavior which could be interpreted as doubt. We would typically handle such matters directly through Spymaster Grog Beamsend, this group acts as though it can perceive the wider machinations of Operation Acquire Asset, and perhaps the spy network as a whole. Given that the auxiliaries are kept isolated from our more active agents, we suspect that they are being fed information from an outside source. It is, however, also possible that their proximity to independent agents may simply have endowed these operatives with the kind of insight that we may one day find useful. 
Given these doubts and the threats posed to Operation Acquire Asset by each scenario, Spymaster Grog Beamsend requests a directive on how to proceed. So the risks are too great, cut them loose, or uh, let's see where these insights may lead. Unwavering insight. Uh, our auxiliary operatives in the Ermanthi Trading Coalition have applied themselves with unusual fervor upon learning that their once intangible suspicions were founded in a real cause after all. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Spymaster Grog Beamsend maintains a strict information quarantine, but reports that her supply lines have never been smoother. Good news for us here. I was wondering why they weren't moving. It's because they haven't, uh... Oh. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna go pretty aggressive. So we'll get what we can of the excavation. Um, I think once they move into the Poru system, I'm going to have to abandon the site and head to Valonis. Again, it depends on how... Yeah, they're definitely moving on. Okay. So that's fine. Again, we've got we've got our game plan. Um, at this point here, it's upgrade as many ships as we possibly can, and then uh, face them. I mean, if they if they want to if they want to make a move on us, they have to take Valonis. Um, there simply isn't any other there simply isn't any other way to progress. Now they can definitely put the herd on us by taking all of the other systems. Um, but the aim is here, again, much like the previous... So, there's a 10% difference with us here. Um, it's a little bit different from the previous war in the sense that we... Um, you know, we waited out the enemy for a really long time and then pounced uh, in the previous war. Whereas this one, we actually start off with a reasonable advantage which we're then going to wind up giving back as a result of some of the, you know, some of the activity that we're seeing right now. Um, but overall, like, I, I'm still feeling somewhat okay about this approach, um, especially because they're actually going to be taking their sweet time to get all of their, their fleets together. So when we take a look at our bonuses, um, oh, hang on, I forgot. We don't get that bonus anymore, do we? Uh, it's under... That's right, because Harmony's not Harmony anymore. Ah! All right. So no, no home field advantage. But we're, I mean, we're committed to this approach anyway, right? Like... As the operation nears its complete. conclusion, Spymaster Grog Beamstend has moved to secure our new asset within the Armanthi Trading Coalition. Our remaining operatives are poised to facilitate any cover she may need. Okay, nothing really to do here, so I think we're going to head back to the capital. Asset acquired. Spymaster Grog Beamsend reports from the Armanthi Trading Coalition. A successful execution so far. Our spy network is now bolstered by access to an influential Amaranthan professional, ready to assist us with operations which may benefit from the asset's own network contacts or the weight of their reputation. Our deep cover operatives have stepped up their surveillance on potential targets. So this is against our current enemies. Discretion's the better part of Valor on this one. I think I'm going to move the science ship out.
Um, I also think I'm gonna have to stop building this, uh... This base. Technology conceived. Plasma thrower. Weapons that eject destructive balls of high-energy plasma at targets. These plasma projectiles are extremely effective at eating through ship armor. Uh, let's do... The cheapest hyperdrive, too. So one thing I could try and do is just move my fleet around and pounce in the YAML system. That's another alternative that I have as well. Um, but again, that stops me from being able to upgrade all of my ships. Oh, I gotta wait on the... We're not gonna be able to build those defensive platforms in time. Multiphasic force fields. We're losing contact with our operative drones as they enter steadily more secure areas of the Favarian Coalition. There is a chance that we could lose our presence there altogether. These interruptions are likely caused by sloppy Favarian shielding technology putting out noisy interference. So I'm curious what they're going to do here. All right, they are going straight for the Kamala system. However, it looks like they're parking one of their fleets as well. So... to take advantage of that. I am always partial to an unfair fight. And it looks like they are committed to the transport. So we have about 6k of force taking 2.3k. This is basically going to be how I try to dismantle their their fleets. Whoa! Slow down, friend. There we go. So I'm assuming they're going to come in as reinforcements. So, we, so far we've lost one Corvette off of that. Two Corvettes. I call that a good day's work. So that's something that's no longer a threat at all to us. So here's the other consideration I need to make now. So if I stay in the Kamiya system, we can... Uh, or sorry, if I, if I commit these, uh, these forces, we can go to the YAML system, we take out another 1.3 off of that stack. However, we're now two jumps away from Valonis. And that's going to be when 2000 uh, plus the 903 plus the 2283 are ready to go after us. So I think as much as I would like to, as much as I would like to try and uh, and make the magic work here, I think it's probably better that I I give up, I give up the gains here, and we prepare for we prepare for the attack that comes after Hark Falls. If nothing else, it will allow us to be able to repair our our existing ships. Also, let's get some replacement Corvettes. So again, the overall we've gone from 10 to 13 in terms of the gap. So this sort of stuff I'm not worried about at all.
what? There's not a split option, really? Huh. Uh, at least somebody should be upgrading. Okay, so they're heading to the Kamala system. Again, patience is really going to be what makes this work here. So both the Deluge and the White Crush are available. So once they're done with the Hark system, the appeal here is to go after uh, the 22k fleet. Just because it's, it's the stronger of the two, and so as a result, uh, I have a little more to be worried about. So yeah, we just wait for... We wait for it to commit. And then we're going to hit it with three fleets. This is also because they can bring some friends. That's not where you should be going, friend. All right. I mean, the other possibility is is that we send a bunch of ships off to go take the Kamiya system, but I, I don't actually have that much to fear from. So what's the worst that happens in this case? They go running into the Valona system, and the Valona system already has a, a defensive structure. So I'm not uh, I'm not too panicked about that scenario. Okay, so they're committed. I am curious. Okay, so they don't have any backup arriving yet. Might be... Oh, that's a nothing fleet. Poru system may be another... Oh, no, Poru system's heading back too. Okay, now this will be a big one for us because this is our first uh, supremacy bonus. So now the ship fire rate is increased by 10%. Uh, of course, I could go for the things that help my, you know, my upkeep in that. But I'm not worried about the economy. I'm worried about my ability to fight. So overwhelming force. Everything must be brought to bear on the enemy if victory is to be assured. A swift and decisive attack can paradoxically save lives that would have been needlessly lost in a prolonged engagement. And again, while we're... While we're at it, let's just make sure that we're not uh, impoverishing the Empire unnecessarily. Okay, we're committed. And again, it's a real pain to see the 1390 just sitting here mocking me. But the patience is... The patience is going to be what lets me upgrade all of my ships and basically build at the same time that they're... that they're uh, losing. Technology conceived. These massive drills are needed. Sorry, deep core manning. These massive drills are needed to access the rich mineral deposits that can often be found close to a planet's core. Oh, uh, I really want cruisers, but that's an expensive tech. So let's get the antimatter missiles. 
So again, this is completely disproportionate, but that is exactly the way I want it to be. Our construction is complete. I'm debating as to whether or not it's a good idea to build more defensive platforms. I think that uh, those resources are better put towards additional destroyers. The Typhoon's at 28%. Black Tide still needs to be upgraded. This could be massive for us. Okay, so the Deluge lost a couple. This is an absolutely incredible result for us. So I'm actually going to take the Deluge back to Valonis. So that was a destroyer we lost. So we'll peel that off the tidal wave. So the reason I'm keeping these guys here is that there's a 956 waiting in the next system. So what we're going to do, now it's time for us to go on the offensive. So I'm going to take those two ships, go to Hark. Looks like they're actually already hardening Trond. That's really interesting that they did that. Um, yeah, this is, this is time for our revenge, right? So um, we'll keep We'll keep the folks in the in Impaltov to repair. That should be two ships worth. Deluge will get a boost once the Typhoon is done upgrading, which it's less than half, so we're still waiting on that. But then we start taking the Cavia system. And again, we just slowly start taking this back system by system particularly at a time when they've split up all of their units. And then we get to decide whether or not we keep these, but this will not be a problem for us to take uh, to take out. All right, a short list of targets has been drawn up. Those operatives who are no longer tasked with surveillance will provide cover for the others. I guess this costs too much influence now. So I'm tempted to send the deluge in right away, but again, I, I want at le I want at least kind of double the power of of whatever I'm coming after. So in this case, I think we just wait for the typhoon to finish its upgrades. Technology conceived. Uh, the advent of clean fusion, automation, and matter compression technologies. Sorry, with the advent of clean fusion, automation, and matter compression technologies, it was only a matter of time before mountaintop removal became a mountain range removal. Uh, we can do farming subsidies. This will be a huge one for us. Or not farming, so the ability to, the, the multiplier to my agri worlds uh, is going to be a huge one. Just waiting on repairs for the Black Tide and the White Crush. I wonder if these are slower than in like a friendly base. Okay, for the most part, I'm not too worried about this stuff. Our 
Okay, so we'll upgrade the tidal wave while the other two are off. But again, this is where we start claiming our our systems back. One of these uh, fleets is considerably faster than the others. Okay, so in the absence of anything else to do right now, I'm going to start building some replacement ships. So the tidal waves currently one destroyer and two corvettes. So it's very unlikely we're actually going to get through this queue, but whatever I can do to get closer to that to that number. So obviously a convincing win for us. Hopefully we don't lose a ship on the follow-up. Okay, so we lost one for the Typhoon. Okay, so obviously we want to heal everyone up before we uh, we go further. I am going to just take the opportunity to... So in this case here, we've sort of abandoned the plan of... Um, we've sort of abandoned the plan of upgrading our ships as we go. Um, but clearly, like clearly here, we've got some, we've got some gains to be made. Uh, and the, the enemy is pretty disorganized right now. So if we can start locking them in, like if we can lock them into the Levisco system again, and more importantly, if we can take Yoram, well, Yoram's a nice little choke point for us to hold, and we can we can basically make it Volonis too. Um, we actually have the capacity to be able to defend that now. So again, we just wait for the uh, we just wait for everybody. What? Oh, cool. Okay, so these ones didn't lose anything. I mean, even here, like, the armor isn't all that mm -hmm. damaged. We could probably get by with, uh, with hitting them again, but... Actually, you know what? Yeah. Fortune favoring the bold and all that. Uh, and I think we'll do the same when the Typhoon gets its... its ship. It's just because Yoram and Dearth are such... such prizes. Our construction is complete. And given that we are at a point where, in theory, we can sort of force peace whenever we want. Like, consider what happens if we're able to get a convincing win all the way up to the Avalam system. Like, that's just another, that's just another, um, another sort of branch of conquest for us. It's a good choke point, so it's highly defensible. Like, everything is going, everything is going in our favor if we take the Avalam system. And if we have an effective army, which we do, uh, it, there's a very good argument that claiming, the, claiming these worlds is not that hard. Um, so for instance, we can settle status quo whenever, whenever I want. I, I would lose territory in that case, but um, you know, that's kind of, that's where I'm sitting at right now. So as the operation nears its conclusion, Spymaster Kellyg Starsail has moved to secure our new asset within the Fav uh, Favarian Coalition. Our remaining operatives are poised to facilitate any cover he may need. 
And Spymaster Colleague Starsail reports from the Fevarian Coalition a successful execution so far. We have lured an underappreciated member of the Fevarian citizenry whose attitude and contacts amongst the lower rungs of society are sure to aid our operations in various ways. So I'd love to do another one of those operations, but I think... I think I'll let it simmer for now. So White Crush went in a little early. So here I'm going to let them heal up. Uh, and that's just sort of in prep for what's going to happen in the Tron system. Actually, for this one, ah, oh no, it doesn't matter because we're we're happily building, we're happily building ships. Okay, so the Black Tide's actually strong enough to go after this space on their own, I think. Again, I'm trying to get some initiative here just so that we can we can claim a good choke point. And then the plan here is going to be that the Typhoon and the Deluge can come and help out with Trond immediately afterwards. Oh, we get a science ship too. Our construction is complete. Okay, that's fine. Now again, the enemy fleets didn't just vanish, right? Like they are they are going to come back for revenge at some point. So we're going to dismantle this uh base as soon as we get it. Crush is sitting idle. Technology conceived. Improved food processing techniques will lead to better preservation methods and less spoilage. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it is actually tempting to go for the extra star base capacity. Uh, I am going to do the cheap text though, so global defense grid. Let me just double check that I've got... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so it turns out I did not have a synaptic node. And then on top of that, I didn't have a stronghold either. And I don't see a reason for an alloy foundry right now. I do need more science at some point, too. Okay. Uh, every single one of these ships is healthy. I 
actually, with that in mind, let's take the Black Tide for an upgrade. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about that. Um, well, actually, if we're adding more ships already in the Valonis system... Yeah, you know what? We're already adding new ships by building them. So let's take our existing let's take our existing fleets and actually send them to get some uh, some objectives. So what I could do, like right now, if I wanted, I can settle status quo, and I'm already up. So in this case, I will have gained uh, gained territory on our rivals, and uh, I'm in a more defensible position. But that's not why we. I mean, they went to war with us, but you don't go to war for like minor gains. We we want to take a world. And we we want to we want to learn what these things taste like. So at the very least, I want to claim Avalam. Uh, if I can claim further branches, so much the better. But uh, but we'll we'll see how we'll see how well it goes. We are receiving a transmission from the independent space station of Zuracorp. They appear to have successfully translated our language. Pray. Welcome to Zeracorp. We are a business conglomerate operating in the, uh, sorry, out of the Amastis system, specializing in trade, the very building blocks of civilization, as we like to say here at Zeracorp. Please do not hesitate to contact us if you are interested in making a good deal. Pray. Technology conceived. Okay, we have identified the existence of points in space where a ship expends less energy to breach their way into a hyperlane. This will lead to a new generation of hyperdrives. Nice to have, but uh, we're not ready for it. It's... We'll do chemical plants just because it's cheap, although I don't think it would hurt for me to... to do a few more advanced... Great. I really do need to clear out these uh, mining drones at some point. Okay, good news there. And looks like... Looks like everybody's healthy. So I'm going to wait for everybody to get together for the Uram system. Uh, and that's just because if there is a retaliation, I want to make sure that we're prepared. Actually, you know what? No, we're we're gonna burn the boats on this one. Oh, looks like we're already committed. So the hope here is that we take the we take the planet intact. So I'm gonna send the white crush out to Raskamir. Typhon is or sorry, the typhoon is healing. Oh, typhoon's ready. Oh, there we go. Salt core is ready to to pounce. Okay, so what we do here I'm actually going to force the issue with them. We're going to send we're going to send a big fleet after this ship. Actually, better still, they're going to head to Dirth. Planet 
Military infestation begun. So this is pretty much a done deal already. Okay, good news for us there. So we're, I mean, we're already well on our way to... Uh, we're going to see a ridiculous amount of food suddenly appear. Ten undesirables. Uh, we will replace this immediately with a spawning ground. And a synaptic node. And a stronghold. Oh, and it's a Gaia world. Man. Definitely should have put more defenses on that. Okay, so we knew this was coming. That's why we brought all the ships. Big question is, are there reinforcements? And it looks like there are not. Okay, so we lost a Corvette. We lost one ship off of that. Mind you, they only lost three, so like it's not... <laughs> That's That wasn't exactly decisive, but, I mean, again, we can settle status quo, we get we get lunch at the, at the very least. Those are the peace terms, they buy us lunch. We also probably going to decimate their army. Okay, looks like we lost a destroyer, two destroyers off of that. And antimatter missiles. Advanced missiles equipped with very powerful antimatter warheads. A new and improved guidance system gives them a better chance of finding their targets. So I think we are ready to build a star fortress. No, we're not. That's too expensive. Let's do corvettes. So it's tempting to do either one, but let's do standardized corvette patterns for a start. And the transport fleet will be ready to land the armies. So this is particularly good for us because once all of the once everything's healed, we'll actually just move straight to the Avalam system. Uh, and we'll sort of set up uh, we'll set up a base. Um, I think what I am going to try and do, I, I do want to get a little greedy on this if I can. All right, so it looks like they are not going to go without a fight. So I'm going to have to move everybody as one big unit. Which is inconvenient, but not, like, impossible to deal with. Uh, I guess I was getting two destroyers in the Corvette, so let's do that first, and then... Okay, looking good. Gonna freak out about those. That's only 123. Yeah, they may not actually be heading to dearth based on this. That worries me a little bit, because they if they can sneak around us, that's a big problem. 
Beneath the ruins of the largest city, an amazing discovery was made. An artificial underground complex of immense proportions was detected by surface penetrating sensors. The entrance, highly elaborate in design and possibly ceremonial in nature, was easily located. But further exploration was quickly halted. The two large moons of Yamal-1 exert exceptionally powerful tidal forces. So strong, in fact, that they affect the motion of magma currents in the planet's core. The underground complex seems to have been built with this in mind, with the corridors and chambers periodically flooded with running lava. Luckily enough, the ebb and flow can be predicted, but it is yet a mystery as to why a relatively advanced civilization would construct a subterranean death trap like this. Keep digging. Uh, what I'm going to do with this science ship, as much as I'd like it to keep working, uh, I do have some text that I can I can steal. So again, we got to be patient here. Let's get all the ships in place. Uh, where's the black tide? Uh, damage versus starbase plus 20. That sounds like what the doctor ordered right now. Then again, the upkeep would be nice. No, let's do Hunter's Eye. Ultimately, everything outside our hive is a potential source of nutrients. It comforts us to know uh, which ones we shall devour first. a couple cool vets off of that. So we'll peel a couple off the tidal wave. Of course, all this is just an excuse to take this system now. So I'm not that worried about uh, these ships. Uh, what I'm going to do once we have the... Kind of once we have the health, let's say. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to uh, slip a couple of these out. One to the Raskamir system, one to Hell's Maw. And then... Um, again, it's sort of our choice in, in terms of when we want to want to end the fight. I just don't really want to lose any more ships, so we're going to we're going to heal up first. I'll have to figure out exactly what I want to do in terms of the composition of the buildings, but... This will work for me. So my only complaint right now with this particular uh, set of battles is that I feel like... I generally feel like I should have taken more off of these guys. Now the it's not done yet, right? We've still got 74 war exhaustion if I if I really want to you know make a make an issue of it. But um technology conceived. I do want to be careful. I just I want to make sure that I don't uh, I don't sort of commit myself to a, a level of fighting that um you know that causes me problems later. Uh, strategic value of good uh, of a good defense remains as relevant today as it was to our predecessors in the far distant past. Technology does not render fortifications obsolete; it merely changes their requirements. Uh, we're starting to find some expensive techs. I think clustered synapses probably makes the most sense. Uh, then again, it does require exotic gases, which we currently don't have access to. So you know what? Let's do the xenobiology instead. Overall, I think my tech's a little far behind. I'm thinking we don't have uh, fallen empires here, because if I'm if I'm the biggest 
Um, if I'm the biggest force right now, that has to mean that there are no advanced starts and there are no uh, no fallen empires. It's actually the first game I've ever had where we don't have fallen empires. Okay, so... Well, that goes to the black tide. Yeah. Go back to the black tide. And the storm surge to the white crush. We have assimilated knowledge. So I think what we wind up doing with my navy is as soon as um as soon as we're done here, we just immediately uh, go into into a for, into a fight with these guys. Um, this will be a piece of cake to clean up. So we'll probably have like two fleets that we keep to take out the Soyan system and then the associated systems over here. The rest of the navy just goes and follows, you know, follows the hyper lanes until there's nothing left. Uh, they still only have one one home world, so it's not the hardest <laughs> it's not the hardest uh, puzzle to solve I really am wasting time here so let's get the deluge to claim these two systems and then head home the rest of them are just going to wait for uh, the replacement ships And again, it's sort of, there's a couple of contingencies in terms of how exactly we start carving up the rest of this empire. Uh, and we're probably just going to have to play it by ear for the next little while. The biggest one for me is I, wanna, I want to conduct this uh, as though... I would like. I want to treat this basically as if I was colonizing these worlds. I want to try and think about what I can defend and uh, what the costs of certain things are going to be. Okay... Technology conceived. Oh wow, we actually need to start properly improving this world again. Um, so let's get rid of the quicksand basin for starters. Uh, chemical plants, aside from the obvious safety concerns, the artificial creation of volatile moats is an extremely delicate and complicated process that requires highly specialized equipment. Uh, that disruptor's looking tempting. Uh, as is the UV laser, as is the quantum energy states. I think I'm going to do quantum energy states just for the money. We're doing okay money-wise uh, overall, but... You can always use more. We have assimilated knowledge. Numbers are looking pretty good here, actually. How's the rest of the fleets looking? Okay, the White Crush is sitting idle, so... As is the Black Tide, actually, but... So again, I just want to clean up. Again, if I if I have the chance to, um, if they, if I have the chance to get the borders in a state where I would be happy if I hit the, you know, status status quo, uh, I want to take it. 
but I don't want to be so, you know, I don't want to be so uh, committed to it, let's say, that I I pass up a good opportunity. I we really should have... Knowledge. You know what? I'm going to change this. So you're going to come back to the tidal wave. You're actually going to get a destroyer. So I don't know if I did this wrong or what, but these guys should actually be getting even more destroyers. I'll just leave it at the two for now, but... Learned of a new strategic resource encountered in Hell's Maw in the territories of the Favarian Coalition. How much you want to bet that's not Favarian Coalition territory anymore? <laughs> oh, uh, I wasn't paying attention to our engineering. Okay, uh, definitely cruisers now. Okay, uh, still more research to plunder. So I'm hoping that once we, you know, once we wipe them out here, uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a better idea in terms of what this overall territory looks like. Okay, well, this is just silly. Uh, let's give them hydroponics bay for now. I might change that, though. Probably freaking out a little too much about the... Okay, so I, I do want to be very mindful of this sort of stuff. So there's like two ways that I can handle this, right? So one says, okay, I just don't care that much about them. You know, we sit here, we do our thing, and I just snip off this little part of the empire for myself. If I do that, then I need to prepare for the possibility that they do something, like that they, they build up in strength. Or alternatively, I say it's like, okay, it would have been nice to take this, but let's make sure we actually deliver as much of a herd as we can. We go, we take the Ruria system. Sorry, we take Tazi, we take Rurius because we currently have the forces to do so. And then that just means we spill over into all of these other systems and it doesn't matter that they're hard to defend. Both are totally viable approaches, by the way. It's just, uh, it's a question in terms of what I want to commit to and what I think I can sort of defend. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't have, actually have a good answer to that right now. I mean, realistically, I've got three forces available. Ah, you know what? Let's try and take the Tazi system. It's a it's a greedier move, but I think it's one I think it's one that I can work with. But again, if they do something sneaky with their their own navy, they might be able to come and uh, and cut me off at the CU system. I don't know if encirclement would be an idea that they want to bring into Stellaris at some point. So the idea that like if they were to successfully get a, a fleet into the CU system, to have that um, you know hurt my hurt my forces.
So we did go in single file. I'm a little nervous about losing ships. Looks like we didn't though. So that's another system for, or another planet for us to add to our expansion pack. And looks like they're just completely retreating. So the important thing here is I don't want to move, I don't want to move this Navy, and, or sorry, these fleets until, um, until like everyone is healed because we're getting ready for a, we're getting ready for a fight against like a meaningful enemy here. I guess the one bit of good news is, is that they currently aren't in a heavily defended area. Um, but my personal hope here, we're at 84%, so I'm hoping that with this 16% that we can maybe go and take, you know, take a nice big bite out of them here and still have enough left over to, to sort of nab these, um, these fringe worlds. Okay, so this is pure, this is pure malice right here. Actually, I'm going to slightly adjust, we're going to go to the Taz, the edge of Tazri. Hey, Olaf, we don't take attendance here. I'm always really happy to see you, so I hope you're doing well. Okay. Uh, these guys declared war on us, and much like the last group that declared war on us, our borders have expanded. <laughs> You're battling the demons of hell, also known as Diablo 2. Hey, Blossy! It's been a long time since I've uh, been here the last time. Nice to see I'm still streaming. Always am. Um, we actually had a really wonderful stream last week uh, where so many people from Brace Yourself Games came by to watch us play Phantom Brigade. That was a lot of fun. Um, partly just because uh, Brace Yourself is full of really cool people um, who are like just generally like they make a they make a chat really f like fun to be in. Okay, it looks like we lost a Corvette out of that. So Uh, but yeah, I was feeling like that after that stream in particular, I was actually feeling really, um, uh, I, was, I was feeling right, kind of pumped for streaming. Um, but on top of that, uh, we, we had the, when we did Wolfenstein on Friday, uh, somebody from Machine Games stopped by and said hello. Ah, oh, thank you very much for the host, Olaf. Um, so, bunch of developers stopped by lately, which I, I like doing, like, I don't know, it's just one of these things where it's, it's sort of like whenever you find someone who has a cool job and they're able to, like, talk to you about what Our they do, you know, to me, that's, that's fun, that's interesting. Um, so, you know, if I, if I get a chance to, you know, have some of that in the, in the channel and I, you know, I get to learn a little bit more about the game or, you know, I get to hear, there's just something really exciting about hearing someone talk about something that they're passionate about or that they're proud of doing. Um, there's just something really fun and exciting about uh, being in that environment. So uh, that was uh, that was a, a very memorable stream. Okay, I've got a... This is a trickier one for me. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go straight for this system. I'm also going to rush the army in. Should actually be a little more careful about how I do this. I should also probably heal up first. So the, the catch is, is that they might take this fleet to reclaim Rurius. It's actually very likely that they're going to do that. And it's not the end of the world if they do, but I'd like to be prepared, let's say. <laughs> So this is me just inheriting a whole bunch of uh, a whole whole mess. Uh, we will put our usual synaptic node down. We'll build a stronghold, and if we can, sell off whatever consumer goods. The hive has no need for your consumer goods. Uh, yes, we're. It's actually my first time I'm playing a devouring swarm. 
So uh, I went with the idea of a... So the species is basically um, the, the idea of... It is fear itself, it, you know, any time that you have had some kind of negative feeling or, you know, anxiety or that, that that is actually physically manifested in one part of space and that uh, the story of our devouring swarm uh, is the moment in which it has hit that critical mass and it can start, it can start sort of moving out and, and really influence the, um, the galaxy as a whole. So, you know, the idea is, you know, a couple of, you know, a, a ship like winds up going into this sector and it's not heard from again. And, you know, the family feels very anxious about that. Well, that says, all right, this is something I was a little worried might happen. Um, you know, that would be, that would be something that winds up sort of feeding the fear, um, the fear of the species. Uh, and it's kind of, I just figured that that was a, that was sort of like a story idea that would also justify sort of the play style that I think is encouraged uh, for the hive mind or for devouring swarms, which is to try and build a lot of momentum and and sort of capitalize on it if you can. So um, definitely I am learning that the the process of like consuming planets and incorporating them into the swarm is not trivial like it that is actually a hard thing to do right um but it has been working for me so far although on that note i do want to make sure that i'm i'm properly managing my my empire here all right uh we will stay true to the agra the agra world label although it's certainly not the thing i really need right now um my generator world does have an energy grid which is a good thing my mining world. I question whether or not I actually need this to be a mining world. Um, mind you, it's a savanna, so... This should probably be one of the ones that I am big in, though. <laughs> Speaking of, we actually have the money to do that. Now, again, we're in a deficit, so we're not going to do that yet, but I should probably should probably get on that. Oh, cool. So now we can start properly turning this into a forge world. You, Savannah. So I'm curious why this gets labeled as a tech world. I mean, I don't have anything on it right now, anyway, so. Um, oh yeah, this is definitely a tech world. Uh, it's because of the extra physics research. So habitability and happiness, like that sucks, but I gotta take the opportunity as it arrives. Okay, I don't think we're gonna need that much food. <laughs> Famous last words. Um, mind you, it is a Gaia world, so I should probably think before I mess around with this. Uh, well, clearly this is so much better as an agriculture, as, as like a food world, if I'm going to do that. Okay, so the one thing we know for sure is that it's not going to be used for, agri or for agriculture.
all right, all this is going to get uh, shuffled mm -hmm. around. Fair enough. Okay, now we need to think about uh, what's going to happen with the enemy ships. So the first question is, uh, are they moving if they are where? Okay, they're definitely moving. So I guess the next question Technology is, do I feel like I can take the... Do I feel like I can take this system before before their presence matters? Uh, basic entanglement principles applied to energy generation provide a substantial increase in energy output. Sorry, um... Olaf, uh, I was going to say something about Diablo 2. Diablo, I've played Diablo 3 all the way to the end. I think I might have even played Diablo 1 all the way to the end, but I, I have not played Diablo 2 all the way through, although I know uh, they did just recently release a remaster. Uh, great thing about this game is that you always learn something new, and if not, a new patch is just around the corner to change it all. Very true. And hello, Kurzoff, 22nd of their name. How you doing? Uh, I'm debating about UV laser or wormhole travel. I think I should do wormhole travel. We've got a few in my in my territory. And actually in the Raprick system, that one's not defended right now, so. Okay, I do kind of want to see what they're up to. I think probably what's going to be the deciding factor is how quickly... Oh, they're here. Cells, thank you very much for the subscription. Oh no, my apologies. It's Index Gnome gifting uh, Dells. <laughs> Thank you to you both. All right. The other thing that I need to acknowledge is... Uh, that's really nice of you, uh, Index Gnome. Thank you. Uh, and again, for those of you who are not taking advantage of it, the Eyes of Sin has done some wonderful work on these emotes. Uh, for the ones that you don't get uh, with the basic uh, with the basic subscription, you will be able to access with your channel points. Keep in mind that channel points are earned at a faster rate if you are a subscriber. So that's sort of a nice way if the you know if the upper tier emotes are something you like but you don't want to put the money towards. Um, just simply sitting in chat is a way that you can you can do those. I, I'm actually really happy with the work that uh, Isisin did on them, so it makes me happy to see people use them. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna say you only YOLO once and try and take the system, and then we'll double back and defend ourselves from the Favarians. So the important thing here is that it is it is possible that settle status quo. Uh, will turn its head. So I need to I need to start thinking about what I can sort of secure. Technology conceived. Uh, studying the life that arises on other worlds and beyond allows us to understand fundamental aspects of biology that were previously beyond our reach. Let's do. Vitality boosters, except that I don't really need that. <laughs> oh, I gotta get the army in here. All right, White Crush lost some, um, lost a Corvette out of that. Okay, so we're all gonna move to the I'm going to start by moving everyone to the Tazri system because I want to eventually go to the CU system. Oh. So we kind of knew that was coming. What they're doing here is actually a reasonably smart approach. So they know that, like, basically in this case here, it's pretty clear that they're going to... They're going to be getting some losses, but by by committing forces to raise my war exhaustion, it's going to put limits on, um, on how much I can claim. Planetary 
infestation begun. I really do need to check to see how many uh, how many units are defending that system before I I commit like that. Okay, looks like they lost their nerve here. Interesting. I mean, it makes sense. This is stronger than them, right? So I do have a little bit of a dilemma right now. I think what I'm going to start off with is... So I'm going to park this fleet in the CU system. Ah, damn it, the brain reinforcements. How much you want to bet they're going to reclaim that? Oh, get out of there! Okay, so I guess the question is how much... How much fighting am I really willing to commit to? You know what? The answer to that is a lot. Because every planet that I don't take off of them right now is just something that they're going to be able to um, to take off me later. So let's unite the forces. We'll defend the Bige system. Maybe leave the Typhoon in the background for now. We'll bring them in when we're ready to move on. Oh, I just put the army in a pickle, didn't I? Oh no, that's fine. Okay, this is going to be a little weird, but... Thing is, if we lose the... If we lose the station here, that's not a big deal. Although the science ship's going to get it in the throat. Oh, well, I tried. Sorry, just a second. You really gotta get out of there. <laughs> we flee the hostile storm. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go for it. It's delicate. Let's just leave it at that. Oh, okay. My science ship is out of out of action for a bit. So I'm assuming what happens is we take we take them here.
Um, my guess would be that they might make a move on Rurius. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. Now, if memory serves the way that the um, the way that the forced piece works now is um, you uh, you have a warning. So even though we're going to go up to a hundred percent, we're actually going to have some time to lock up our conquests. Conquests. Okay, so I think it's pretty clear that we want to uh, lower our admin fees just so that we can get the energy con uh, credits under control. So we shall accompany our deep space hunting swarms with giant carrier drones, essentially nerveless sacks of protein paste with a hyperdrive. The drones will be drained and die, but the swarm will live on. So... Okay, we're not at 100% yet, so what we're going to do here is we are going to heal up before we move on Fevnor. We're going to move the army in place here. So the new game plan is going to be as follows. First of all, let me just see. Holy crap, we didn't lose anything out of that. So first things first, these guys have got to heal up. Typhoon's gonna give them dirty looks uh, across, you know, across the hyper lane here. Um, my big goal is to claim Fevnor because it's a piece of cake to take all these neighboring systems. Uh, if I do it on my, uh, I think it's just the normal difficulty. It's either the it's either the normal difficulty level or one step above. Um, the last one that I played kind of clobbered me, so I've been sufficiently chastened. And uh, I'm... Um, I don't quite know why the hurricane's just sitting there like that now. Um, but yeah, it's either the standard difficulty level or one above it. Um, but yeah, my, my last, last round, uh, was fairly, uh, fairly embarrassing. So we're rolling, <laughs> rolling the difficulty, but it's definitely one back from the last difficulty level I played on. But yeah, anyway, so the idea here is that, um, if I do it on my own time, Fevnor is going to, the attack on Fevnor is going to push my war exhaustion up to 100%. That's going to start a timer at which point my enemies can do a force uh, force status quo. So that timer has two really big components to it. One, uh, taking all the surrounding systems here, and then the secondary goal of claiming sort of this little frontier system here. One of the reasons why this isn't a priority right now is because I don't know what lies behind this system. Like, it might go here and then just stop. It probably doesn't. Um, or it might go here and then all of a sudden, like, it's just, you know, it's almost as if I, you know, I, I found a whole new galaxy waiting over there. So I'm really just trying to see what I can lock down for myself at this point. Also, I need to deal with the fact that my starbase capacities too small, but that's a tomorrow me problem. And how are we doing jobs wise? Pretty darn good. I mean, we've got a few problems in the sense that some of the conquered worlds have uh, are sort of unbalanced, but Oh yes, uh, we just acquired acquired a new resource producer. Mm -hmm. 
Feels like they improved the AI a good bit. Learned from fighting, uh, learned that from fighting battleships with destroyers in the last game. Yeah, I mean the AI's made some somewhat questionable choices um, this particular round. So they had a fairly good. They had like a fairly good um, run at me that I couldn't really handle, and then they decided to split. So basically, I had a choke point at Valonis. We had kind of pushed into uh, Uram, and we even made it as far as Avalam, and then they had this like 10k. Curse uh, on 20 sec uh, 22. Thank you very much for the follow. Um, basically, they they had a 10k fleet, which was tough for us to deal with at the time. Um, and I was going to make a stand at Levisco, but I actually got pushed all the way back to Valonis. And essentially, what I was going to do was I was going to sit and wait for kind of the for the big fight at a, at a position that I felt I was really defensible at. And they wound up splitting up their fleet so that they'd sort of like take the YAML system and then they'd send like the one fleet off to Kamiya. And so we just sort of devoured them one by one. And while they were slowly moving through, uh, we were just sitting back and either building new ships or upgrading them. Um, now, on the other hand, like that, I, I think that at least what they made was a somewhat defensible, um, a, a somewhat defensible strategic choice, in the sense that you know they couldn't have necessarily known what I was uh, gearing towards, right? Like you can kind of see that maybe that would have gone the other way, and they wouldn't have necessarily wanted to just go in and sort of throw, you know, throw all the bodies at Valonis uh, where they knew it would be more of a fair fight, but. Whatever, whatever it was, like for me, they basically kind of played right into my hand, uh, to my view. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the the AI is definitely, I mean, especially on a far enough, uh, far enough time frame, you can say the AI is definitely improved. Um, and even here, this is, uh, even though it's maybe made what I consider to be somewhat questionable choices, uh, I can, I can sort of, I can sort of see the logic of it. Again, I'm just waiting here on my war exhaustion. They're not doing anything with this fleet as long as the Typhoon's sitting there, so I'm taking advantage of that. Um, I think I still have ships that are on their way. Yeah, so the Storm Surge should be merging with the White Crush. Whether or not they arrive on time is another question. And again, as soon as I see a message coming up saying that... So there's one of two things that needs to happen. Either these ships need to repair, or I need a message saying that in, you know, two years or whatever. There we go. So you've reached 100% war exhaustion in at least one of our wars. You can be forced to make peace 24 months after reaching high war exhaustion. So in this case, because forced peace is now on the table, um, I kind of need to decide when I want to make my move. Uh, I am going to run the risk of... So I'm quite confident in my ability to take and hold this area. I'm less confident about being able to take and hold this. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to let my, let my units heal. Again, I'm not a hundred. Speak. <laughs> Come now, fear. Let us end this war before it gets out of hand. These are our terms. No. The body fails, science intervenes. I don't think that's... <laughs> Why would we ever uplift something as a hive mind? <laughs> um, the deep crust engineering I do need because that is actually blocking a couple of useful worlds that I have, so... We have assimilated knowledge. Smart aliens taste better. <laughs> Teach them philosophy. It's the make them the cow that wants wants to be eaten. Um, well, philosophy or Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm running a risk. I'm I'm actually running counter to my plan here. Uh, I am gonna wait. One of two events: either the reinforcements arrive or the fleets heal up. They should heal before the reinforcements arrive. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, sorry. One of these is so much faster than the others, so let's just move to the the edge of the system first. 
the army will be waiting. So again, we claim all this. Whatever gas we have left in the tank, we we claim this whole area. Rockrov died. <laughs> Science ship knows what's up. <laughs> I mean, that is a meaningfully strong fleet. So it looks like the White Crush lost a destroyer and a corvette. Yeah, they lost quite a bit. We have assimilated knowledge. I mean, it makes sense, the tip of the spear. The good news, though, is that if the rest are untouched... Oh, that's not true. The Deluge has lost some as well. Overall, though, that is not too bad. And more importantly, casualties don't really mean anything anymore. Um, because we're, you know... Like, we're not worried about war exhaustion. That's just a thing that happens to us now. Okay, we should have moved the army... Okay, what's the butcher's bill? Uh, two destroyers and a corvette. Okay, so three destroyers and four corvettes. I'm actually going to slightly change things around too. So I should have been doing these upgrades ages ago. Oh, this is the one we just claimed. Sorry, what did I say it was? Three destroyers, four corvettes? I'm gonna have to figure it out like later, but so I will give him a chance to heal up here. We are gonna send them out to a bunch of you know a bunch of systems to fight, so. Construction is complete. And actually, more importantly, um, we have assimilated knowledge. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Planetary infestation begun. So, once the, again, once the fleets are healed, or at least reasonably healed, um, the reason why I want to sort of heal them as far as I can is that we're going to move them up into CU to uh, do like one big push. So if I can if I can take everybody from a position of being more or less fully healed um, into a big push on this fortified position. So for instance, one thing they might try, uh, given that they're already reinforced, they might actually try and... Um, they might try and make a move on us on our own. I think probably I should send the Black Tide out to uh, reinforce CU. Again, if it looks like we're going to lose that fight, we just force the peace. We have got about a year. Uh, I hate to say it, but I can't wait that long. So I'm going to take my weakest fleet to go on the Grand Tour. We're going to send the rest... To see you. So we may still wait to heal. I just need to see. I need to see where we're at when the. We have assimilated knowledge. Oh yes, I need to change the um, composition of the world as well. We're probably going to replace this agriculture, but...
we'll see. I'm not going to be too upset if we have to halt the advance at CU. Uh, I am going to downgrade this one, though. It makes sense to have bases in, like, on uh, systems that I I have planets. Doesn't make too much sense to just have one of those sitting. Oh, hang on. Whoops. <laughs> it, it did have a. My bad. Ah, crap. Oh, I got lucky. Um. No, we're gonna we're gonna be brave. We'll hold the line. It looks like they are gonna go for the. They are gonna go for the base. So we just wait for our friends to show up. So keep in mind some of the oh wait these ones didn't need to heal. Again, we'll I'm willing to lose the station. We're not, we're not at the point where they can force the peace. Although it is less than a year, so it's less likely that we're going to be able to claim this. 71 days? Jesus Christ. Thing is, this is a fair fight, so I don't actually want to take it until I have that third fleet. Oh! Technology conceived. Brutal. They're going to take Avlam. I'm going to have to chase them all over this, the map. That was very smart on their part. So now we're going to spend the whole time chasing these guys down then. The one bit of good news is that they are going to have to fight in the Avalam system. We have assimilated knowledge. And I do have one really fast fleet in there, so... But again, the hopes, the hopes that we would uh, claim fear, Mithiros, it's done. Irrepressible, how you doing? Uh, not too bad. I'm actually a bit late tonight, like just in terms of going, going later, but it's been an interesting, it's been an interesting war. So can't say I'm sad that it turned out this way. It is tempting to go for the extra naval capacity, but I'm probably going to wind up revising that. Like, we already have so much more than we know what to do with, so I think I'm going to do adaptive bureaucracy for the admin cap. Maybe old news to anyone else, but any announcements or new news on the job front? Uh, yeah, um, I went from, like, hearing nothing from anyone to, um... Well, I've heard back from uh, Ubisoft, EA, and Activision Blizzard now. Um, Activision Blizzard never really followed up, uh, so I don't know how seriously to take them. Um, I actually have a sort of a, a deeper interview with Ubisoft uh, tomorrow, which I should be preparing for. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. Um, we'll see. We'll see how the rest goes. Um, this, of course, does not mean I'm fully committed to leaving my existing position. I, I'm sort of in this nice. I'm in this nice place of, you know, I, I'm going to need a sufficiently attractive offer to, like, really, um, like to to like really leave. Um, but. Uh, Needless to say, like, 
the whole the start of this whole thing was um, I had not you know I had applied to places before um, didn't even get like a first interview uh, and then a friend of mine sort of got me in touch with one of the data people at uh, at a company that you know I was really interested in um, we talked a bit and they gave some recommendations and I sort of as a as a consequence of that conversation um, did this other batch of applications which clearly have been far more successful than anything else that I've uh, that I've done so um, I'm going into a lot of this as just an opportunity for me to learn a little bit more about how the job search um, process will work because I really have not needed to do anything like a job search properly in a fairly long time um, and if a nice side effect of this winds up being you know um, hey you know I get lots of stuff great uh, and if it doesn't you know that's that's fine too yeah exactly um, you know I, I had done exact before that I had done exactly one technical test and the real shame about that one was is that the technical test was on Python stuff that I in normal circumstances can do in my sleep but it's the first time I'd ever done like some kind of a technical interview or test before and I definitely let my nerves get to me and so you know just this wonderful opportunity was pretty much closed off um, because of that sort of lack of preparation and um, you know we talked to, I talked about that with the guy it wasn't a gaming job but basically when I, I was talking with the guy he sort of says like well you know the one thing you don't want is you know your dream job to be the the time that you're you know you're figuring all this out so you know it definitely wouldn't hurt to just go and you know try a few applications get some practice and then you know when the really big opportunity comes through so obviously I don't want to waste people's time I'm not applying to jobs that I wouldn't intend on taking if uh, if it was sufficiently attractive but I also kind of need to accept that I I am underpaid relative to my skill set my current position but that doesn't necessarily mean that the gaming equivalent of the job necessarily will pay me what I am accustomed to uh, and so I am sort of trying to navigate what I think is a fair price for my skills with a certain kicker that I give for the fact that it's in an industry that I think is quite exciting and with opportunities with data that I, I probably won't find in other locations. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not in a point where I'm necessarily accepting everything, but I, I'm feeling a lot better about the, the thing overall. Um, Scum and Villainy on Favaria. Deviant activity continues to grow on Favaria in open defiance of the will of the hive mind. Entire communities of deviant drones are believed to exist on the planet now, stealing resources from the rest of the hive to support their nefarious activities. Uh, it's a shame, but I mean, this is because there's 53 people who are being consumed right now. So, uh, drone deviancy modifier added, giving the following effects. Deviancy plus 15, deviant drone jobs plus one, deviant drone job per 33 planet crime. Mm -hmm. Strayed from the hive mind. Okay, so now we're ready to to clobber these guys. It's extremely important that we take this thing out before um, before the uh, status quo. Technology conceived. UV lasers, ultraviolet lasers, are an updated and more powerful version of their blue predecessors. Accurate and destructive, these weapons are capable of inflicting great damage. Uh, let's do the extra physics. Oh, hang on. <laughs> We're not ready to research that yet. <laughs> we just got that from stealing it from our, our rivals. Okay, hopefully we can catch them before they go through the Technology hole. conceived. Come on, that's got to count. No! Originally devised an experimental next-generation colony ship hull configuration, 
The design's ample hard points make it ideal for carrying heavy weapons ordnance. Uh, I gotta do the strike craft, it's cheap. Oh, this is gonna suck. Get out of there. So the good news is, is that we own this planet. So even if they take the system, it's complete. But yeah, 52 days, it's a complete pipe dream that we're gonna be able to claim this. I am hoping that we can at least claim- Our construction is complete. Uh, Emuthen. The others speak. Go away. We have assimilated knowledge. Mm -hmm. Technology conceived. The progress we make calls for a new, nimbler form of administration that may aid rather than hinder us in our pursuits. Uh, okay, let's keep boosting the administrative capacity. And then wormhole travel. A naturally occurring subspace wormhole is a fickle thing, and its fluctuating energy levels typically make it impossible to travel safely between its linked apertures. There are ways to temporarily stabilize its matrix, however. Okay. Uh, it is really tempting to try and go for the uh, gateway activation, but again, just relative on a relative basis, after the discount, we still can get this stuff uh, for less. So let's start with the ion disruptor. Okay, force piece is possible. Hopefully we can claim this base. Our construction is complete. Uh, I do also get a chance to restock. I wasn't expecting that to work out so well. Our construction is complete. Our construction is complete. So it as far as I'm concerned, like I'm just gonna keep pushing this to the bitter end. Um if we get a chance to go after after the system, I'll take it. I think it's very unlikely that it's going to happen, but um, I figure there's no point in us giving up you know, giving up the potential for gains uh, just because the AI doesn't want to force me into the position. Oh, I see what happened here. Okay, so the Typhoon's now 38 because we got the extra space. Okay, so we'll kick out a destroyer and six Corvettes. I was wondering why that fits so well. So the White Crush gets three of those Corvettes. Uh, Black Tide actually has too many... too many destroyers right now. But I don't want to mess with that. Oh, 
Oh man, and we can build cruisers too. Okay, um That's the easy answer. As many as possible. Uh, the other thing I want to do is, well, when I can, is get a uh, science ship built. I'm genuinely surprised that they have not forced the peace. take our gains. Circumstances dictate that we put an end to this war. The fear has better things to do than pursue this conflict indefinitely. We will accept this for now. Okay, so that's 10 years of peace that we just bought. Um, that we just bought. So again, it's worth remembering the two wars that we have had to fight have come from uh, the enemy species declaring war on us and it both in both cases we uh expanded our borders so in this case here they managed to sort of go all the way up to the trond system i seem to recall um and then they declared war and then obviously this is what we claimed i might have been able to manage this a little bit better it's really hard to say that it's bad that i got their capital um i mean like obviously this is gonna t this is this is gonna take a while to digest um and i'm probably gonna have to pay for having so much um you know having so much uh deviancy uh, I believe, as far as the fleets are concerned, yeah, we severely outnumber them. Uh, I believe it's the same case, so these guys don't really seem to have grown their fleet at all, and they're still just a one, um, they're still just a one planet species, it looks like. They have a colony ship, but it doesn't actually seem to be, it doesn't seem like they've really taken advantage, oh man, they've got more than one. Um, but it doesn't really seem like they've taken advantage of any of this. I don't know if it's because I've sort of uh, cut their empire in half or whatever. But clearly I have a lot of work ahead of me in terms of just getting all of my ships where they need to be. Um, I, I pretty much the only, only sensible option here is to immediately declare war and just occupy the rest of this territory. That is going to mean that my empire sprawl absolutely explodes. I need to think a little bit about how I'm going to handle that. But overall, uh, we're in a good spot. More importantly, this was not true at the beginning of the game. Uh, we're not just in position number one, um, but we are convincingly in position number one. So uh, after, you know, after we're finished with our, the rest of our tradition tree, so nine months, and then I'd say probably within 60 months, let's say, uh, we can do Become the cri Crisis and... Uh, you know, assuming there's anything left by the time we start Become the Crisis, we'll be able to try that out for ourselves. But all of that is going to be left for another evening, um, because I'm almost an hour past my usual finish time. Well, maybe not usual finish time, but I'm an hour past when I normally broadcast. And I do actually have some stuff that I need to do before I start work tomorrow. So I know a few of you uh, came in a little bit closer to the end and I apologize for not being able to go for the full uh, the full evening but all good things must come to an end and uh, I will um, you know I, I actually I'm gonna be putting the other Stellaris episode that'll be uh, added to YouTube as soon as I'm as soon as I'm done uh, broadcasting here um, for those of you who like Stellaris only um, that will be coming back in uh, next week Tomorrow, uh, there is another Oblivion episode. I believe, I'll double check that it's already uploaded on Twitch, but it should be. So that'll be at seven. Again, that's pre-recorded. So if you're looking for a live reply, that is not for you. But if you enjoy hearing the Dark Elf voice, you can do that. That's also available on YouTube. Uh, Wednesday, we'll probably be back to um, Phantom Brigade. Uh, I really enjoyed that one, but I would also like to do some more Industries of Titan. Uh, and then Friday, we've been going through the Freedom Chronicles for Wolfenstein 2, uh, the new Colossus. Even though it is, um, 
I am Death Incarnate. It feels like I'm making faster progress on the the Freedom Chronicles than I did the main game. So we'll probably get through about a third. Um, I would I would predict. Oh, thank you very much, Delves. Anyways, sorry, this is a long goodbye. Let me find somebody to host uh, for you tonight. Um, I think there were a few of you earlier, so I will try and see if there's somebody Stellaris focused who I know. Uh, no. Um, I actually don't know anybody online. Um, so what do we have here? We've got somebody learning Stellaris. I don't, th don't suppose anybody knows who these uh, streamers are. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to try and opt for somebody who is learning Stellaris, because I think that might be a little more interesting. So this is Heyu 1991. Um, I don't know who this is. Hopefully they are entertaining. I know at least if somebody's learning, that gives you an opportunity to uh, interact with somebody. Uh, more importantly, I really do like being able to sort of boost up uh, people who are on the smaller, uh, smaller end in terms of the viewers, because chances are if that's not working for you, you'll gravitate towards the ones that uh, already have large viewer counts. So uh, please treat Heyu well. Um, again, this is not somebody who I've ever watched before, so I can't vouch for their broadcast or what they'll say on it, but uh, please do treat them well. And uh, as for the rest of you, uh, some of you I'll see Tuesday, some of you I might see uh, Wednesday or Friday for the live broadcasts. And uh, for those of you who just are here for Stellaris, I'll see you all in a week. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.